Our darling boy's complaint was intestinal. He was in coma all the night and very thirsty. The last spoonful I gave him appeared to choke him. For two days he grated his teeth, of which he had four, poor dear. His tongue looked all over white scales, and it seemed to rattle against his teeth. He was nothing but bones, only a shadow of himself. Our other darling had the measles, from which we thought she was recovering nicely. But inflammation seized her through, and the agony she suffered you can never fancy. We applied a linseed poultice and a mustard plaster to her chest. All of no avail. Her heavenly spirit was in a haste to join her brother and meet her God. Poor little Alfred was the first that died on 30th of October. And on the 8th of November, dear Fanny went. And three days after, on the 11th, the dear babe was taken from me. I scarcely know how I sustained the shock, though I was certain they could not recover. Yet when poor Fanny went, it overpowered me, and from the weakness of my frame reduced me to such a low nervous state that for many weeks I was not expected to survive. It seems I gave much trouble, but knew nothing about it. And though I was quite conscious that the dear boy and Fanny were thrown overboard, I would still persist that the waters could not retain them and that they were with me in the birth. At 11, the funeral of the child took place at the stern of the ship. The body was sewn in a piece of canvas and weighted, laid on a board and covered with the Union Jack. A gangway was then opened right at the stern of the ship and the plank put through. The child's parents and myself, the doctor, the first mate, three apprentices and the captain, who led the burial service, were the only persons present. We therefore commit her body to the deep to be turned into corruption looking for the resurrection of the body when the sea shall give up her dead, and the life of the world to come through our Lord Jesus Christ, who at his coming shall change our vile body, that it may be like his glorious body, according to the mighty working, whereby he is able to subdue all things to himself.